Tonight we have our very special guest, very beautiful. All you horny guys, pay attention. This is the ultimate Pekka Picker Upper. She's beautiful, she's intelligent, she's been in the business for about 10 years. We are very glad to have tonight Kay Parker. It's good to have you here, Kay. Uh, Am I all together here? Those two tits are magnificent and beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. Kay, you've seen the business change. When you started yeah. several years ago, uh, the business was more amateurish. Have you seen the business evolve into a better industry, or do you feel it's gone backwards? Well, it, for a while there, we were making really nice movies. The budgets were high, and, and talent was good. and. And not to say that talent isn't good anymore, I better watch my words here, but, but in the last couple of years we've seen the video boom. And unfortunately that, that has meant that budgets have dropped. A lot of people have come into the business and there's a lot of product out there. And unfortunately, from my way of thinking, a lot of it is not so great. Hopefully it'll, it'll sort of phase out. A lot of the videos will phase out and we'll maybe get back to some what I consider real quality. I hope so. And that's exactly why I've invited you here. Because what you are now on is going to be, I think, the new wave. It's going to be uh, sex films as fun, sex films as Hell's a Poppin', Olsen and Johnson, sort of a Saturday Night Live with tits and ass. And we're going to aim something for a younger, hipper audience. And that's the other thing I wanted to ask you. Uh, in spite of the fact that I think this will have a light touch and a raunchy touch, do you think a sex film can do any good? Can it teach somebody something that's useful? Oh, absolutely. A lot of the feedback that I get when I go out into, the, into um, the, the, the world out there and talk to people is that a lot of people really look to adult films for sexual instruction. I was one of those people. In what way? Uh, were you a bad cocksucker? Did you not find you were turned on when a guy ate your pussy? I mean, I'll be... I was uncomfortable with it. With the cock sucking or the pussy Yeah, eating. all of it. All of it. I was uncomfortable with my sexuality when I first got into adult films. If you look at some of my earlier films, you can tell that I was a lot stiffer in those days and rather uh, introverted, you know. And uh, uh, it's kind of fun to watch clips from my own films and see how I evolve sexually. Are you a better sexual partner now? Oh, absolutely. But it's more because because of who I am. I've grown as a person, you see. And as you grow as you grow in life, as you mature, I think, you know, you become more comfortable with yourself and your own sexuality and it's it's like a good wine, you know, it just matures. Well, I, I see you sort of like a Latour in nineteen sixty six. But do you think that most women out there in uh, video land know how to suck a guy's cock, know how to bring him off, know how to give him pleasure? Do you think most women and most guys are bad fucks? I, I can't generalize about things like that, but I, I do know that there are a lot of people who are not comfortable with it, and they do they do watch adult films to maybe get some tips, find you know some different techniques. And I think that's true. Is there anything you would not do in your personal sexual life that you would do in a fuck film? <laughs> that's an interesting twist. Um, Probably. Well, you know, in my own, in my own sex, sex life, it, it's, it's just myself and the person. And I just really, uh, you know, I'm a heart person. Heart person. Where's my heart? There's my heart. Listen. And, you know, so I check into the person's heart and, and we communicate from that angle. And then the sex is just the icing, you know, on the cake and, and it's, it's great and satisfying. You know, on film, it's a lot different. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a difference. Even though I always go for a real nice connection with my partner on screen, too. I think that speaks for itself. Would you have sex with a Jewish guy? <laughs> a fat Jewish guy. You know, I noticed that a lot of guys in, in adult films are, are, um, are Jewish. Well, that's because they're getting laid for nothing and being paid for it. <laughs> and uh, it, appeals, it, it appeals to the Jew in us. I mean, Jewish guys grew up wanting pussy, and suddenly here we're in a world where it's available. I mean, it's fantastic. But would you fuck a fat Jewish guy in a blue T-shirt? <laughs> Not that I know any here. I'm just curious. I mean, I'm You're trying putting to me on the spot. Just say yes, no. Um, you are in a film, uh, I'm told, called Lorelei. Uh -huh. uh, it's, a, it's a recent film. Can you tell us a little bit about the sort of setup, what the film's about, and some of the surrounding participants in this work? Lorelei was um, a video, which, which I have been reluctant to appear in, just because that they're shot rather quickly and they're low budget, so there's not much room to really get in there and do a good acting job. In this case, I had the opportunity to work with some old friends who are very good actors. Our bowler is one. Jewish. And uh, yes, he is. He's Jewish. He's yeah. wonderful. And uh, um, Billy D, who's one of my all-time favorites. Well, he's black. That doesn't count. Oh, uh, no. yeah, but I'm kind of partial. Anyway, uh, and the young man, Dan the man, Danny man, 
And uh, yeah, so I had some really nice people to work with, and I had a good time, and uh, I think it shows. Well, why don't we go roll and take a look at some of those clips? Okay, why not? Well, that was a hot scene. You must have blown half the stage hands away with that one. I hope they enjoyed it half as much as I did. Well, now do you want to know what happens when you live in Beverly Hills? Well, I do live in Beverly Hills. Well, close by. Well, then you probably know about that deluxe limo service that includes everything. And I mean everything in their services. Including the driver? Mm -hmm.